Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, or as we like to say here at Shady Acres Woodshop, howdy! Today is not going to be a turning video. This is going to be a shop video. I'm going to try and answer a few questions I've had, show a couple of places that I work. It, I could show you the shop, but it wouldn't do a whole lot of good, but I can try. So stand by for shop secret. So this is going to be a little shaky, I suppose. This is what I see every morning when I come out to the shop. And I always tell people that we live in the woods. And because we live in an actual city, the city of Bonnie Lake, Washington, people wonder, well, how can you live in the woods? Well, we've got a little bit of acreage here, right in the heart of the city of Bonnie Lake. This is what it looks like. There's the house over there. And if you look up, when we go RVing, I like to stay at a Walmart parking lot. And the reason is because I can actually see the sky. The views here of the sky are limited. When I bring people out to the shop from the house, it's deceptive when you walk up to the walk door and open it. Because it's much, much taller and larger than it looks. Got uh, 11 foot ceilings in here. It's all unfinished. There's no insulation whatsoever. I put that pegboard wall up here 30 years ago when we moved up. And I've just been collecting lumber basically all my life. And this lumber over here came from a yard sale and it goes back there. Uh, some of it's 20 feet long, 16, 12. And then that lumber down there on the floor, I bought right after I retired and there's all kinds of different hardwood in there it's all hardwood those two stacks that you see and what's in that wood bin right there I bought those all from a cabinet shop that was going out of business and then I discovered the lathe and now I don't do woodworking so what I have is a jam-packed shop that I don't use and I keep most of my tools covered up. That's the bandsaw over there. A uh, couple of the toolboxes are covered up. This is my Delta Unisaw all covered up. Down here is my Delta Joiner. I've got various sanders on this table or these two tables covered up. Uh, another table there that's my with the can of paint sitting on it. That's my uh, router table. I've got that DeWalt scroll saw that I've never used in my life. There's the lathe. A couple of drill presses. 60 gallon air compressor. More wood off, off of, over on the far side. And see that cool heater sitting up there? Brand spanking new. Got that at a yard sale for a heck of a deal. Natural gas. Problem is I never put any natural gas out here to the shop. And that's why the shop is unheated. That thing would do a terrific job. Maybe someday. Here's my sharpening station. Which is nothing more than a $99 Porter Cable grinder with CBN wheels on it. So that's a $99 grinder with $360 worth of wheels on it. Now if you buy CBN wheels for yours, don't make the mistake that I made. I bought one inch wide ones. Inch and a half wide is the way to go. These, uh, these grinders can easily handle that by removing the side cover. Don't really need the side cover. The only reason you need that is when you're using the stone type grinding wheels that have the potential to explode. This is the side wheel or the side cover there is only meant to protect from that happening or to contain the explosion. So if you're going to buy CBN wheels, my recommendation is get the inch and a half wide. These work fine. I just have to be careful that I don't go off the side and it's kind of a pain in the butt every time I use them. I always forget that I even have this radial arm saw. 
It's an oldie, but uh, it's a 12 inch, and there's nothing better for certain cuts in wood. But I got so much crap setting on it, and I don't seem to do woodworking anymore. So there it is, collecting dust. Obviously, I made no attempt to clean up the shop before shooting this video. Uh, this is what I call my main workbench. It's actually a piece of bowling alley, and it's stout as can be. This bench sits uh, in front of the other bench, and this is a purchased workbench, and I've had it for about 32 years, I guess. I, I use it a lot. I, you probably see it in some of the videos. So there's that workbench, and then the lathe right here. And over here are my chisels. Uh, I built this rack for my chisels when I had a different lathe that came, uh, well actually I had to move this lathe over to the right away from those chisels. The other one came right up to it, so what I did is I made it so that it pulls out. But it hasn't been pulled out in so long that it's kind of hard to pull out. I see all kinds of sawdust and crud in the, in the slides down there. But that's what, when I'm reaching for a chisel, that's where I'm reaching. I don't pull that out anymore. I did have a question from a viewer a while back to show how I, how I make these little blocks of wood that I use to uh, go inside of the finished bowl to remove the tenon. I've got, uh, I just have three of them. Maybe I have four of them somewhere. Uh, mostly I don't make them. They, they just sort of happen much like this. This is from that redwood piece I did a few weeks back. And this is just a cut off. This is three and three happens to be three and three and one eighth of an inch and that'll fit into my large jaws. And so if I wanted to use this for to replace one of these or to make another one of these or one of these or this, something like that. What I would do is I would just chuck this up in my chuck. So now it's sitting in the chuck like that. And I just face this off. Just smooth it off. Just take a chisel and make it flat, make it round, whatever it is, whatever I'm trying to accomplish, whatever kind of block of wood I need. And then I could use it just like that. Or I could take this all the way down to this size and and use it uh, as a, a smaller one. I don't really set out to make any of these. I don't really go grab a two by six and and make one. They just happen to they just happen along. So in this case, this will fit back into a chuck. In case of this one, uh, I drilled a five sixteenths inch hole. And I just screwed it onto my woodworm screw. And then I backed it off. And I put some CA glue on the threads. And we have a block of wood suitable for removing the tenon on a bowl. In this case, I took a minute and glued some uh, non-slip material on here. So that one mounts via uh, the woodworm screw. As does this one. Same deal. This one mounts in uh, the chuck jaws. This is two and an eighth, so this is for my smaller jaws. This one here that I could turn into one is three and an eighth, so that'd be for my larger jaws. But you can see where they'd end up being exactly the same thing. So rather than show a video on how I do it, I think that probably explains it. I also had a viewer ask to show how I sharpen my chisels. I'm not an expert at it, uh, you can see that I do have a grinder and wheels. I've got the one-way Wolverine sharpening jig. So I will show you uh, just a couple of couple of things on how I use that. There's lots of videos out there on how to do it the right way. I'm just going to show you my way. So this is how the jig is usually set up. And what I sharpen the very most, of course, is my 5 8 inch bowl gouge. Can you even see that? Kind of blurry, huh? And I take this uh, very grind accessory and I just slide that in there 
and just barely tighten this. And then down here I have a, a, a two inch setback. This is purchased, I didn't make this. So you just push that with this loose, you just push that in there until it stops. Now you know you have two inches. Then you just tighten this up. Just tighten the big brass knob on here. And now it's held well within the clamp. And then if you have changed your settings, if you've slid this in or out from the last time you sharpened a, a bowl gouge or whatever it is you're sharpening, then I also have these guides that, that just go here. They just set in that little saddle. And you put it up here until both of these points touch. And then you know this is out the right distance. And then it's just a matter of turn the grinder on. Come all the way over here to your far edge is the way I do it. And that's all it takes. Can't do it wrong. It, it really doesn't get any easier or better than that. Now a lot of people make that little two inch guide that I showed you. And a lot of people make these kinds of things. These guides to uh, get the distance right. I, I, I used to be into that kind of thing. I'm just not anymore. I just want to get on with turning. So practically everything I have related to turning is purchased. I just don't want to mess around making jigs anymore. It's just not that much fun to me. I, I wish you could feel how sharp this is. This is razor sharp. And it's so simple. And you can't do it wrong. Now my darling wife bought all of this for me, the, the uh, Wolverine jig, she bought that for me. And last Christmas, she bought this for me. You know what that is? That's a jig for this jig. And it's for sharpening skew chisels. And I smiled and said, thank you, dear, and I thought it was kind of a goofy thing. But I'll tell you what, it is not goofy at all. So once you have that installed, you loosen up your what's holding this in place so that it can slide and you go like this and you pull that out until you I'm looking at the bevel up here you want that bevel to set pretty flat and even evenly um. get it equal so it's kind of back and forth now I'm looking at it to see if that the pointy part of the edge is, is centered and then you feel that holy smokes that's sharp just amazing and so simple now one of the most common questions I get asked is what angles do I set my negative rake scraper to? Sharpened on the top and the bottom. Well, I didn't know. I just came up here, see if I can show you the the tool rest. I just I just came up here with the, the normal grind that was on here, which was the bottom side. Sorry for the shaky camera. And I matched it up and I I sharpened that side. Then I turned it over and I knew that the combined angle, whatever angle the bottom is, whatever angle the top is, has to be less than 90 degrees when you combine them. So 40, if one, for instance, is 45, then the other one has to be something like 40 to make 85, which is less than 90. It just has to be less than 90. That's all I know. So, so I just sharpened the normal bevel that came on the tool. Then I turned it over and I looked at it and I adjusted this tool rest to something that would be less than 90 degrees. I, I, I just didn't pay attention until someone asked me. So I wrote it down. I don't know if you can read that. Uh, set the tool rest for the bottom part of the uh, scraper. Happens to be 36 degrees. The top, in my case, maybe not in yours, is 39.6. That's 
That's just the way it happened. Not because I aimed for it, it just happened that way. And not that those are the right ones. Uh, it just has to be less than 90 degrees, that's all. So how did I determine that it is 36 and how did I determine that it's 39.6? I took my little electronic bevel box, I think that's what they're called, bevel box, and I set it on the base of the jig, of the Wolverine jig. I set it right on the base and I zeroed it out. And then I brought it up here to the tool vest. I took my gouge first and got the bevel to match, you know, on the bottom side. Look, looking at it sideways from over here, I got the bevel to match. Then I set that little bevel box on the tool vest and I read the bevel. This is not set for this right now, it's set for something else. But you can see it says 38.4, so I just I wrote that on that little piece of paper so that I could answer people. 30, 36 degrees on the bottom bevel, 39.6 degrees on the top bevel. Very odd numbers, I know, but it works. And I'm happy with it. I don't know how you would measure this without one of these things, and I don't want to try and find out. Now something else to keep in mind when you're regrinding your single bevel scraper to a negative rake scraper. Grind the top first. Grind the new edge first. So then when you grind the bottom edge, that's what's going to bring up the burr. And that's what does the cutting on a scraper is that burr. And then once you have that and you're happy with it and it's sharp and it works great, and then after a short time, and I mean short time, uh, if you can get a minute out of it, you're lucky before it needs sharpening again. But you don't have to sharpen, and I've showed this tip more than once, but since we're doing this, I'll do it again. Just get yourself a round shank screwdriver. Find the bottom of that bevel until, until, you, can feel, until you can feel this part of the bevel, the heel of the bevel, and the toe of the bevel. Put it on there until you can feel both of them. And then lift that up just a touch. Lift up your round shank screwdriver just a touch. Put your thumb up here on top. Find that, find both bevels, heel and toe. Lift it up just a touch. And then just apply some pressure and run it around that edge. And that'll bring up a burr in no time. Maybe, maybe two or three passes. Now I've got a nice hair edge on there and that's gonna cut real good next time I need it. So I'm really sorry there's no turning this week. Uh, next week, I hope. And uh, I hope to see you soon and I hope this was of some interest to you. I hope it answered more questions than it created. Thanks for watching. Till next time, this is Phil, Shady Acres Woodshop, signing off.